All the people around us, sometimes our family, can be the most toxic. Coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. Thank you for joining me today. Great question. Dear Pastor Bob, my in-laws are a problem. No matter how much love my husband and I have shown them, how many times we forgive them for the hurt they caused us, that still cuts us like a knife to this day. There are things we've done for them just to demonstrate the love we have for them. My husband is an only child and is often finding himself on the outside looking in. Although they are divorced, they always have time for each other, but could not make time for their son this year to visit him in the hospital or ask me if I needed help with this heavy load I've been carrying. They don't want to be bothered, but continue to badger him for his time and services that they need. We will forgive them again, but we cannot be around such abuse. It's not healthy, especially with my husband not being well. They don't understand the word no. They often get mean and vindictive towards us if we refuse to accept their behavior, even turning others against us. What are your thoughts about all of this? You know, sometimes family can be the most toxic, honestly, the most toxic. And um, it's a difficult thing when you're dealing with family because these are not people you choose, they're people you're born with. <laughs> And you can't just walk away from them that easily. And, uh, but you need to set boundaries. All of us need boundaries in our lives, even with our closest friends when things are going well. There are boundaries that you set up that you say, this is acceptable behavior in this relationship that you and I have. And if it gets outside of this boundary, then I'm not comfortable and it will affect our relationship towards each other. So you can't reward abusive behavior. You can't say, well, it's all right, just continue to be abusive with me and we'll just have to deal with that. It isn't acceptable. There has to be some boundaries. You have to set them up. You know, the Bible's pretty clear about this when it talks about the succession of family. In other words, you know, your parents are the ones that bring you up. They're the ones that train you. My father always used to say that you begin to prepare a child to leave home from the day you bring them home from the hospital when they're born. That process begins then, and I believe that. And so the older they get and the older they, the, the more they get towards that time when they leave home, the more ready they are, the more ready you are, because this has been your mindset. And then there's a point of letting go. Genesis chapter two and verse 24. And it says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So it says, leave your father and your mother and be joined to your wife. In other words, who is the most important person in your life at this point? It's your spouse. And I hate to say this, but it's your husband's responsibility to cut the ties. As long as he's enabling the, re the relationship uh, behavior, it's not going to stop. See folks, there needs to be a break sometimes in our lives. And, you know, it's an old joke about meddling mother-in-laws, uh, but it can be both. And sometimes we want to hold on to those dear children that we don't want to let them go because we love them and we want them around. And, you know, we don't want to go to that next step of just letting go and into the arms of somebody else. <laughs> That's a difficult thing for almost every parent. But parents, 
you need to have the mindset of preparing your child to leave home. That's important. And when you have that mindset, then you're ready for it. If you start to prepare from the time you bring them home from the hospital when they're born, and you say, from now on, it's my job to prepare them for their spouse, to prepare them to leave home, to prepare them for their adulthood. And the whole time they're growing up, you're preparing them to be the man or the woman that they are about to be. And then you cut the ties. They cut the tie from their side and you cut it from your side and you're still a mentor, you're still an advisor, you're still a friend, but there are boundaries now. You no longer are the most important voice. You no longer have a, a, a role in raising them necessarily. Now your role is cheerleader, I always say. Now your role is supportive. It's, you know, encouraging them and, and, uh, and then loving their spouse and their families. And folks, that needs to be done on both sides. There you go. Folks, don't forget, you are blessed. So go and be a blessing.